yes yes all right so i mean just to recapitulate uh, uh, last time i did some generalities etc maybe we can quickly look through the notes uh, 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 so this is the aim of the dalin lustig theory is to construct representations of gfq uh, uh, from a torus a maximal torus in the group so given the character of the maximal torus uh, one wants to construct a representation of the group uh, if the maximal torus is maximal split torus then this is the usual uh, induction uh, arising from the borel subgroup and uh, if the torus is <coughs> somewhat split then one can still go to intermediate levy subgroups uh, so i think eventually the problem reduces to tori which are uh, not split at all and for gln there is only one so, uh, such torus which is uh, given by fq to the power n star inside gln fq so hmm. So for GLN FQ, uh, there, there exists only one torus, which is an isotropic model of the center. is uh, fq to the power n star inside gln fq and uh, this theorem which is there uh, on this page uh, uh, asserts that if you take a regular character on this uh, field extension or torus then there is an irreducible cuspidal representation pi chi of gln fq such that its character is uh, given by this. So if the element doesn't belong to the torus, then the character is zero. And if the element generates, uh, so it belongs to fq to the power n star, which means that it will then generate a subfield fq to the power d, then the character uh, at s times u uh, is given by this. Uh, so, you know, this is a complete character information. This is as complete as it can be. Characters are uh, understood at all elements S times U. If S doesn't belong to the uh, field extension FQ to the power N, then the character is zero. And if it belongs, then it takes this value. Uh, so somehow, um, uh, this part of the character summation of chi s sigma, uh, these are uh, elements inside the torus which get conjugated to each other. And then there is this uh, factor which is uh, somehow the mysterious factor or uh, factor which we don't fully understand how to define that in more generality. Uh, this factor can be defined more or less in the same way in all cases. But uh, this function would be would be the tricky one. Uh, yeah, in fact, uh, I did want to make the comment that uh, <clears throat> yeah. So uh, if you wanted to do induction from B to GLN FQ of a character chi, then uh, so suppose this is pi chi, then uh, character of pi chi at let's say a unipotent element, which is what uh, that Green's theorem is doing for a cuspidal representation, is uh, uh, 
number of uh, borel subgroups containing u uh, you know okay so there, there, there is this well known formula about uh, character of the induced representation character of pi chi at u is uh, sum of uh, chi g u g inverse such that uh, g belongs to g and uh, g u g inverse belongs to m and uh, to say because it's a unipotent element to say that it belongs to n is equivalent to saying that it belongs to b and uh, so this is if and only if uh, u belongs to g b g inverse So, uh, uh, I think we have to divide by one upon. Uh, so, this is if and only if uh, u belongs to uh, this Borel, which is uh, in, uh, which counts the number, so which, so this counts. So uh, uh, I just wanted to take the occasion to point out that uh, if you are given a unipotent element in even in a group like GLN and you want to count how many Borel subgroups are there containing that unipotent, I think it's a, not a trivial problem. I, I have not tried doing this problem, but uh, of course, if u is a regular unipotent, regular unipotent, then there exists a unique Borel. Unique B, and therefore uh, this character at u is equal to 1, which one knows? And uh, what do you mean by regular unipotent? Sorry, what do you mean by regular unipotent? Regular unipotent, I think one definition is that it belongs to a unique B. Uh, mm -hmm. Other definition for GLN is that it is a single Jordan block for GLN. Centralizer is smallest dimension, right? That is what. Yeah. yeah. Well into so if and only if single Jordan block. Okay. Or if and only if uh, dimension of the centralizer of G is the smallest possible. possible which is equal to. Uh, rank of the group. So no, I am just saying that uh, the character information at unipotent elements. Is, okay, so this is, you know, there is a name to this uh, variety, and uh, maybe it's uh, good to keep that name in mind. So this is called the Springer uh, fiber association. So given U, you look at, uh, so this is uh, BU. A variety 
you know this is the variety of borels and this is you so uh, this is the springer variety uh, it's a close sub variety of the flag variety so uh, v is g and uh, it is the u fix points And uh, so, being a fixed point of some uh, automorphism, it is a closed sub variety, but uh, you know, I think it's a complicated variety, and uh, even the dimension I would not know. Uh, but there is a, some beautiful formula about the dimension. And uh, is this okay? So I'm saying that even for principal series to calculate the character information at all unipotents is uh, a challenge. And uh, luckily in this case, uh, for cuspidal representation, the character information at all unipotents is, is uh, a much simpler information. So I think maybe that is what is happening as the tori become um, um, kind of more anisotropic, the information becomes easier. Okay, so this was uh, Green's theorem. And then I guess I began uh, the linguistic theory by uh, uh, recalling McDonald's conjecture, which says that to every maximal torus T in G and a character, there is a, which is regular in this sense, uh, that all the W conjugates are different. Uh, then there exists an irreducible representation pi theta of G of Q of dimension equal to this, whose value on a regular semi-simple element is non-zero if I know, no, only if S belongs to the torus. Uh, the character uh, at a regular element is in fact given by epsilon T epsilon G times summation theta the character at the various conjugates. Further, the character chi theta at regular elements is independent of theta. And you know, just like uh, in the Green's theorem, the character at unipotent element are certain polynomials in Q. So these chi theta at U, certain polynomials So, I, which doesn't depend on theta. Character uh, of the torus plays no role, only the unipotent elements play a role here. And uh, these are called Green's functions. Functions. Uh, these are polynomials in Q parameterized by two variable by T and U. So the torus is uh, a variable and the unipotent element is a variable and for each one there is a polynomial in U. Okay. So, uh, just to give uh, or recall these examples, uh, cuspidal representation of GLN FQ has this dimension, uh, which is uh, GLN FQ P prime uh, component upon order of the torus, which is FQ to the power N. For GL2 FQ, then there are these principal series which come from split tori and the discrete series which come from FQ square star, which is which is this example one. So, you know, these signs that I talked about last time, epsilon t times epsilon g, minus one to the power uh, dimension of the uh, split torus. So, for uh, this fq square star, the dimension of the split torus is one and epsilon g is two. So minus one to the power one, 
times minus 1 to the power 2 which becomes minus 1 and uh, therefore there is a minus sign here and there is a plus sign there. So for people who were uh, in my last lecture, you know, I, I was telling that somehow there is a lot of signs in these character formulae and uh, one has to keep track of them. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, one of the things I must do is to tell you how these uh, dalin lustig representations are uh, defined. Uh, even if uh, it will be some black boxes, but still I have to show you at least some of it. So this is what I do now. Uh, so, okay. so instead of defining RT theta for any character of FQ, one can as well define a more general representation RLG of rho, where rho is any irreversible representation of a Levy subgroup. So here, uh, I think the point is uh, that these are not Levy subgroups of parabolics defined over FQ, but of parabolics defined over FQ bar. So, you know, like tori, unless they are split tori, they are not uh, Levy subgroups of Borel. Only the split torus is uh, the Levy subgroup of a Borel <coughs> in a split group. So other tori are uh, what one calls twisted levy. They become levy over FQ bar. <coughs> okay, so the definition, uh, I, okay, so begin with the algebraic variety, which is denoted by XU. So uh, yeah, the parabolic P is LU and you define the algebraic variety XU as those elements in G such that G inverse FG belongs to uh, FU, FQ bar. So in some sense, I was a bit confused why this FU is there, but uh, I think that is there in the original paper. In some other places, I have seen only U, but maybe it doesn't make much difference. Mm. Yeah. So I will not worry about uh, that uh, so much. Uh, and FG denotes the image of G under the Frobenius map. So uh, maybe I should just recall the Frobenius map. So for any group G in characteristic P, uh, uh, say over FQ, I think the Frobenius is over FQ. So there is this mapping Frobenius from G to G, which sends X goes to X to the power Q. So this is how it is denoted. And what that means in terms of matrices is that you send the matrix XIJ to XIJ to the power Q. So at the level of uh, GLN FQ bar, to GLN FQ bar as algebraic varieties, this is a group homomorphism. Group homomorphism. And if a subgroup is defined over F2, then it makes sense also on the subgroup. So the, that is what I'm calling, uh, in fact, Frobenius. Okay. So we look at XU as those elements in the group for which G inverse FG belongs to this variety. So I, uh, I'm not sure how many of you may be familiar with there is something called the Lang map on GFQ. Uh, yeah. So the uh, notes that you had circulated earlier, there is no FU, it's only U. Yeah, but I think uh, that's what. So in some ways, uh, as I said, it perhaps doesn't make much difference because, you know, the, uh, the Levy subgroup was defined over F. So if uh, P is equal to LU. Then its unipotent radical is also defined. Yeah, somehow. No, unipotent radical is not defined over F2. But... Uh, yeah, what I'm saying is that, uh, you know, in this game, 
what is important is L and you are looking at any P to be LU and yes. then uh, F of P is therefore L remains the same because L is defined over F2 and F of U. So that what gives you another parabolic in which F U is there. Oh. So in some sense, um, it hardly matters whether it is U or F U because uh, the set of U's which come up are closed under F and therefore either I take the inverse image of U or of F U is the same, same. Okay. Yeah. So no, I, I perhaps it is being done for a certain region. I could, could, did not think enough about it. Okay. okay. So uh, there is the famous uh, Lang map, uh, uh, and uh, I guess uh, uh, in some other lectures, maybe Manish Thakur has uh, proven uh, Lang's theorem. So there is this mapping f from g to g, uh, which takes g to g inverse f g. And uh, this mapping is uh, surjective and uh, finite fiber, which is GFQ. And uh, it goes into uh, proving that H1 of the Alva group of FQ bar over FQ with uh, coefficients in G is equal to trivial. So there is the famous line map, uh, et al. cover of G by G F Q. So uh, thus these uh, dalin lustig varieties X U are the inverse images of F U under the line map. And as I said, the line map is an et al. or un what is called an unramified cover of the group. So these are unramified cover of the affine, uh, affine line is not the word, affine space because you know unipotent group uh, in terms of uh, uh, the variety structure it is isomorphic to an affine space and uh, we are looking at a unramified cover of the uh, affine space but in characteristic p there are interesting uh, coverings of the affine space and this is one in which uh, there is the galva group gfq okay so the variety XU has left axon of GFQ and right axon of GFQ. So maybe I just want to say that. So XU is uh, G such that G inverse FG belongs to, let's say, F of U. And uh, therefore, it has uh, a right axon. So you send G to uh, G times G naught, where G naught belongs to, no, it should go other, other, other way around. Belongs to GFQ. Then uh, you see uh, the inverse will go to G inverse, G naught inverse, and then the Frobenius of this, Frobenius of uh, G naught, Frobenius of G. But uh, because G naught is defined over FQ, this is equal to one by definition. And therefore this becomes G inverse FG. And uh, since U is normalized by the Levy subgroup, uh, so that action is uh, G times L. Uh, belongs to XU, let's see, because uh, here if you do uh, the same game, so this will be L inverse, G inverse, FG times uh, FL, FL, but L is defined over FQ, so L, and now it is the same thing, which belongs to FU, but uh, uh, the uh, F u is normalized by L and therefore this belongs to. So the point is that you have a certain variety X u which comes equipped with an action of G F q and L F q. And the dalin lustig representation is on the Q L bar vector space uh, what is called compactly supported et al cohomology of this variety. Alternating sum of this variety 
So this admits because whenever a group operates on a variety, it operates on the cohomology and you get an action of GFQ cross LFQ. So now whenever you have a vector space with an action of GFQ cross LFQ, then to a representation of LFQ, you attach a representation of GFQ. So that is some generality. If uh, pi is a representation of G1 cross G2, then to any representation, any irreducible representation of G2, one associates a representation of G1 by considering pi to isotopic component. Pi, but you know, uh, pi two isotopic component of pi as G two representation. But because G one commutes with G two, say i pi two for uh, isotopic component, but i pi two will be a module for G one cross G two. By definition, i pi 2 is uh, invariant under g2, but because g1 commutes, uh, if you have some representation here, which is isomorphic to pi 2, its g1 uh, translate also will be isomorphic to pi 2, say i pi 2, which is a module for g1 cross g2 on which D2 acts just by pi 2. And therefore, i pi 2 will be will be some uh, representation pi 1 tensor pi 2. Because pi 2 is irreducible, then there will be some representation because uh, this is a module for G1 cross G2. Any module for G1 cross G2 is, uh, any irreducible module is some pi 1 tensor pi 2, but it's the same pi 2 because it's uh, fixed and therefore you will add it up. So this defines uh, to each and not necessarily irreducible so in fact you know i mean for those of you who attended my last lecture of theta correspondence it is the same game which was being played you know uh, the, the the there was the veil representation restricted to g1 cross g2 but all that we care here is that you have some representation of G1 cross G2 uh, and the groups uh, commute and then to each irreducible representation of one of the groups, you can associate not necessarily an irreducible representation pi 1 of G1. And then, you know, as I was saying there that for finite fields, this is not uh, uh, necessarily irreducible and it may not be multiplicity free and all that. And in fact, all of that is what is going on here. And uh, uh, so this pi one is not necessarily irreducible, but you have defined. And uh, so R L G of rho tensor rho is this representation of uh, G F Q cross L F Q. So this is a commuting action because one is on the left, one is on the right. So they are commuting accents on cohomology and uh, you take a irreducible representation row and then out comes this representation.
that's all and uh, then by you know cohomology comes equipped with certain properties and those properties we will have to utilize to make some assertions on these representations but uh, at least the first order of business was to uh, define the variety and uh, define the representation which we have done so maybe i will take a pause and see if there is any uh, queries So you know, Dalin Lustig uh, representations are representations on a certain cohomology of a variety in characteristic P. And of course, we don't know what is a cohomology theory, et al. cohomology with compact support and all that. But uh, you know, in some ways, uh, what is important is that a group operates on a variety. I should also mention that, you know, somehow what is important is that not only that finite group GFQ operates, but somehow, you know, if the, all of GFQ bar operated, then this would not be good because GFQ bar looks like a continuous group. If it operates on a variety, then uh, on cohomology, everything will be trivial. So somehow what is important is that it is GFQ which operates and nothing more. And when we did the computation that GFQ operates, you will see that we use the condition that G inverse FG is equal to identity. We needed that. Mm -hmm. So on this variety, nothing more than GFQ operates. On this variety over FQ bar. So, you know, GFQ obviously operates on GFQ bar. But, you know, that's the stupid. Or, you know, there are many flag varieties. There are many, many varieties associated to the group on which GFQ will operate. But those things are of no use because the, the group operates geometrically. What you have to do is to do something on which uh, it is only the finite group operates and not the GFQ bar operates on the variety. No, uh, is is it also uh, important to have the space of functions as finite dimensional somewhere on which the group operates? I mean, here. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, maybe that is uh, implicit, uh, Manish. But you know, anyway, we are dealing with finite groups. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. Even if the group representations were infinite dimensional, somehow whatever I said will work. Sure, sure. But uh, it is true, you are right, that uh, if the space, if the vector space involved was infinite dimensional, then we will be at a loss to construct anything meaningful. So I think it is indeed the point that we are at uh, uh, cohomology of various kinds are all finite dimensional. So, you know, it is based on all, uh, you know, SGH, etc. of Grothendi, but these are all black boxes. So, Dipendra, was this a variety in existence in some other cases, uh, not, not no, for finite no, groups? Of course, uh, they say perhaps a bit uh, too generously that uh, the idea of this variety came from a remark of Grimfeld. I see. But, uh, you know, Manish, I think you will like this. Uh, uh, there is this, uh, what is called the Fermat variety. Mm. Uh, x not uh, x not to the power q plus x1 x1 to the power q plus x2 x2 to the power q is equal to zero it's the same thing as x not to the power q plus one plus x1 to the power q plus one plus x2 to the power q plus one you know this is uh, inside p2 uh, is a curve is a, a nice curve you know, it's not peak power of anything. It's nice. And in fact, uh, uh, this variety is, uh, uh, you know, in characteristic uh, P, X, X bar, the, what is called the Hermitian conjugate, is X naught to the power Q. So this, uh, this is like, uh, 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 it is analog of the quadratic form. Mm -hmm like quadratic form where you to look at x naught square plus x1 square plus so on here you are looking at x naught x naught bar plus x1 x1 bar plus dot 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 
and this bar is nothing but fifth power. So Hermitian form. And uh, because it is a Hermitian form or a quadratic form, the corresponding group will operate. And uh, therefore, uh, on uh, these varieties, uh, so these varieties uh, get a natural accent. of uh, u3 over f3 and uh, this is uh, one of the dalin lustig varieties i see uh, thanks dipendra this is this yeah, yeah, no i mean uh, uh, analogs of uh, this hypersurface x0 x0 to the power q were also studied by tate and thompson i see So they also looked at this variety and the fact that the unitary group operates and therefore some representations come, up, come about. So I think they considered that and I think some interesting representations are there, which I forget. Okay, anybody else uh, with any query on the lean lustig representations, which I have defined, and then I will talk about some of its properties and prove a few of them and give you some flavor of the subject. Anupam, you want to make some comments? That's fine. Good, yeah. So fine, we will continue. Okay, so these are the dalin lustig representation. In general, uh, yeah. So, you know, constructing the representation was easy. Once the variety is there with a action of the group, uh, uh, GFQ cross LFQ, then to each irreducible representation of LFQ, you can associate a representation of GFQ. And uh, as the notation su suggests, this representation depends only on L and not on the parabolic. So, okay, this is always to be decided. Okay, so, uh, uh, so here are some of the properties. Uh, so this is what is called the orthogonality relation that you look at the lean lustig representation rt g theta and rt prime g theta prime then uh, their inner product is uh, a number of elements in gfq which take t to t prime and theta to theta prime so if t is equal to t prime so you know uh, in particular, after conjugation, if this is non-zero, then you can assume that t is equal to t prime. And then this is equal to those elements in the while group, which take the character to itself. So this is something rather well known for principal series. And uh, okay, so therefore, a particular consequence of theorem 6.1 is that when the tori are mm, not the conjugate by fq rational point then uh, these two are orthogonal either the tori are not conjugate or the characters are not conjugate so you have the same torus but the characters are not conjugate okay so there is another notion which comes up in the subject and it can be a bit confusing uh, so here there is this conjugacy by gfq but there is also a notion of what is called geometric conjugacy. So geometric conjugacy is that there exists an integer n such that uh, tn comma theta n and tn prime comma theta n prime are conjugate. And here for a maximal torus t of g defined over fq and a character theta on t, the torus tn is the torus which is so to say fq to the power n. Now considered inside GFQ to the power n. 
and the character theta n is the character of t and f2 given by uh, t and f2 to the power n there is a norm mapping to t f2 and then there is this character so uh, this is the called geometric conjugacy So one way to keep in mind the geometric conjugacy is that, you know, for GL2, I talked about two tori, split and non-split torus. If you look at the non-trivial, uh, no, trivial character, then over a quadratic extension, the non-split torus also becomes a split. Uh, Dipendra, one question. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry about your definition of geometry conjugacy. Uh, uh, so, if two uh, tori are conjugate by some FQ bar points, then they will be conjugate over some finite extension of FQ. Yeah. So, sure. is that uh, what you are talking about? No, I think it is both the torus and the character. Uh, and the character as well. Right, right. They should be conjugate. And, uh, in uh, right. Right, right, right. Okay. okay. And the characters are uh, conjugate in a certain way. Right, 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 right. So I was just giving you this example that uh, example. I think there will be some more worked out example uh, that I will discuss. You have two tori FQ square star inside GL2 FQ and FQ star cross FQ star inside GL2 FQ. So, of course, these two tori are not conjugate inside GL2 FQ. Right. They are conjugate inside GL2 FQ bar. Correct. But they are conjugate over GL2 FQ square already. Correct. And what I am saying is that in this case, since the character theta is trivial, is one suppose the character theta is one then uh, uh, the torus t1 and t2 uh, are conjugate over fq square and conjugation takes trivial to trivial obviously sure But uh, the part of the issue is given a character of T1 FQ, how do you create a character of T1 FQ to the power n? So uh, I, I think maybe this is what I need to clarify. Given a character theta from T, which is a torus defined over FQ, and look at FQ rational point, and you have this character theta. And you have, uh, so to say, this same torus over FQ to the power n. So you want to construct a character here, theta n c star. So what is that character? So the way I, I it is defined is that there is this norm mapping. Norm map, right, right. Norm mapping, and. Uh, the norm mapping, uh, I guess, is the usual norm mapping. Yeah, uh, product of gamma conjugate. It's a problem. Yeah. Uh, if a, any abelian group uh, over FQ, group over FQ, then there is the notion of a norm mapping from A FQ to the power N to A FQ, in which uh, you send any element X to x plus sigma x plus sigma n minus 1 x and uh, where sigma is the Frobenius of fq to the power n over fq and this element will be invariant so it lands inside fq and uh, that's the norm map good So there is this geometric conjugacy of uh, 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 
uh, these pairs and then there is this theorem uh, which says that the virtual representation rt theta and rt prime theta prime are disjoint if and only if the pairs are not geometrically conjugate so one says that two representations are disjoint if they have no irreducible representation in common so definition v1 is equal to summation ni pi i and v2 is equal to summation let's say mi pi i are set to be disjoint if uh, ni times mi is equal to 0 for all so whenever one coefficient is non zero the other coefficient must be zero so you know you have to uh, observe that uh, pi 1 plus pi 2 comma pi 1 minus pi 2 this inner product is zero because it is uh, uh, pi 1 pi 1 minus pi 2 pi 2 1 minus 1 but uh, these are not disjoint so disjointness is a stronger condition than orthogonality is uh, stronger than orthogonality of course uh, they are same uh, same for honest representations if all the coefficients are greater than equal to zero then there is no difference but uh, these representations are only virtual representations. Dalilustic representations come with some coefficients. Okay. So here I say a few words. The representation, uh, this Dalilustic representation is nothing but the parabolic induction. If L is a Levy subgroup of a parabolic which is defined over FQ, because in that case xu can be identified to this fiber product gfq cross ufq times u you know you recall that x xu was inverse image of u under the line mapping and uh, the line mapping was somehow gfq torso and uh, yeah so uh, it is more or less the variety u expanded by GFQ, uh, maybe there is this uh, cross U, and uh, the group uh, U being contractible, this space is for topological purposes essentially GFQ upon UFQ, which is the home for principal series. So this variety is irreducible, right? No, in this it's case. Not clear. Uh, uh, here. It doesn't look irreducible here. No, in this case, it is not. No, it is a yeah. union of so many components. Yeah, yeah, right. This variety is not irreducible. Okay, okay. Because uh, it is uh, GFQ cross U is a variety which is uh, U GFQ many times. Correct. And then you just divide by UFQ. So it is, uh, so to say, uh, the variety U as many copies as G upon U. FQ. So this uh, this variety in the if uh, p is a parabolic uh, defined over uh, fq p defined over fq then xq is uh, as a variety disjoint union of u alpha isomorphic to u where alpha runs over gf Q. Mm -hmm. It is as many copies of uh, the uh, uh, unipotent uh, group. 
which is an irreversible variety, but then it is a disjoint union. And therefore, uh, uh, cohomologically, the cohomology of XU is uh, cohomology of U, which is cohomology of a point, and therefore it is just a uh, uh, direct sum of so many points, which is uh, nothing but just this object. So, uh, yeah, this is a good exercise to think about uh, to uh, understand what is going on in the dalin lustig uh, cohomology of dalin lustig variety in this simplest case. Okay, so properties of the dalin lustig proper uh, induction. So th there is uh, this uh, induction that uh, if L is a Levy subgroup in G and M is a Levy subgroup of L, then you can do uh, induction from M to L and L to G, that will be M to G. So, you know, these things will come kind of for free. Yeah. There are certain things which come almost for free. Oh, what surprised me a little bit was that there is a dimension formula for the the linguistic representation, and that comes after a lot of hard work. So the dimension of these uh, representations will require uh, non-trivial work of many kinds. So in fact, uh, I did prepare myself to give you some idea of the proof. Uh, okay. So transitivity, this will come for free and the behavior under morphisms also will come for free. If pi from G1 to G2 is an isomorphism up to centers, i.e. associated mapping from G1 mod Z1 to G2 mod Z2 is an isomorphism of algebraic groups. Then under such a morphism, tori in G1 and G2 correspond in a natural way. As the inverse image under pi of a maximal torus in G2 is a maximal torus in G1 and every maximal torus in G1 arises in this way. I mean, people uh, could do this as an exercise. I don't know. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, there are two cases to be considered. The mapping is uh, subjective or injective. Uh, yeah. Uh, we then have the following for a torus T2 in G2, let, let pi inverse T2 be T1 contained in G1. Thus, we have homomorphism of groups T1 FQ to T2 FQ. And for T2 composing with the homomorphism, we get a character of T1, which we denote as theta2 restricted to T1. And then, you know, this will follow. I am, I get the feeling for free more of this. I think uh, this will be quite direct. Okay, so, so the corollary of that transitivity of induction implies that RT theta, also denoted like this, has no cuspidal component uh, if the torus is contained inside a Levy subgroup of a parabolic defined over FT. And therefore, the only tori T for which RT theta may have a cuspidal representation are anisotropic. Dalin Lustig representation for SLN FQ are nothing but restrictions of Dalin Lustig representations of GLN FQ. This is consequence of this business about isogeny that we were doing. And similarly, a more general statement for any derived subgroup. So, you know, people who attended my lecture uh, at uh, four o'clock, you know, for SL2 FQ, I said there is a representation of dimension Q plus one by two and Q minus one by two which are part of representations of Q plus one and Q minus one. So what one needs to keep in mind is that Q plus one is the full dalin lustig but not Q plus one by two. So the dalin lustig construction will only give you Q plus one. So all the knowledge of dalin lustig fails for this Q plus one by two. It is a component, it is not full dalin lustig the lean lustig for SL2 FQ will be Q plus 1, Q minus 1, nothing more. So Q plus 1 by 2 is a component of the lean lustig. And in fact, uh, I used to uh, think 
that maybe the character theory of SLN is not fully understood. So, you know, uh, although people have understood E8 and so on, but uh, SLN creates a problem mm -hmm. because it has a center. So uh, groups which have a finite center are source of problems. Whereas E8 has no center and therefore it is one of the simplest groups. Meaning, and, uh, okay, there is some inductive argument. So you may have to deal with center somewhere else, but eventually E8 itself has no center. Okay, so just to get you used to some of these uh, notions about orthogonality and uh, geometric conjugacy and disjointness, I have uh, uh, a, uh, worked out example as a proposition, which says that if pi is an irreducible cuspidal representation of GLN FQ associated to this character, then, uh, you know, this is a representation of GLN and then you can do a GLN cross GLN as a levy in GL2N and you can construct this principal series. And the question is, what? how does it decompose? And uh, you write this one. So because of, uh, okay, so you can realize this full principal series as the Lindros thing. And then that orthogonality relation will say that endomorphism ring of this principal series pi pi is two dimensional and therefore it is direct sum of two representations. Mm -hmm. And the question is what are the dimensions of those two representations? So you see the endomorphism ring is two dimensional. Therefore, it is a uh, uh, direct sum of two irreducible representations. And a typical problem in representation theory is that you know everything about pi 1 plus pi 2. And how do you recover things about individual pi 1 pi 2? And that is what is involved also in q plus 1 by 2. You know the sum of those two are good. But how do you know individually what the character is? So here is one case of uh, that kind. Uh, so, you know, this is the, these are two representations. One representation uh, fix it to have dimension more than equal to, to the other so that it fixes the notation. Then the assertion of the proposition is that the ratio of the dimension is q to the power n. Just that much information. Okay, so the way proof works is that uh, we will uh, do a little bit of dalin lustig induction. We will prove below that Steinberg, uh, so you have written it like this. Then uh, the difference is uh, this dalin lustig representation. So to construct a dalin lustig representation, you have to give you yourself a character of the field. So here uh, the field is uh, character of the torus. Here the torus is fq to the power 2n. There is the norm mapping to fq to the power n star. And then fq to the power n has the character chi. So you can compose. So that means that uh, this torus comes equipped with the character. So this is uh, this uh, anisotropic torus, fq to the power 2n star. Whereas here we were looking at principal series. But uh, uh, this kind of dalin lustig induction from an anisotropic torus, one is claiming is uh, giving you Steinberg pi minus identity pi. And uh, uh, we know the dimension of the dalin lustig representation. But the, there is a dimension formula. So the dimension formula gives you this. On the other hand, dimension of the principal series also, principal series is a dalin lustig So you apply the dalin lustig's uh, uh, dimension formula. So you get that and take the ratio. And uh, so dimension of the sum of the representation is that. No, difference is that and sum is that. And therefore, uh, 
um, uh, each one you calculate yeah each one you calculate you know there is this typo that uh, i am just confused that the dimension of the steinbach 2 pi is the, this product times this thing in bracket which has been simplified to this so uh, this times that so eventually it's an integer and uh, then you see that this uh, ratio is 2 to the power n okay so the uh, main point of this uh, proposition is that uh, this dalin lustig representation is uh, given by this and uh, that one uh, okay so we now proved the observation that was used here that this minus that as a virtual representation is this dalin lustig induction so recall that uh, r t1 theta1 and r t2 theta2 are orthogonal unless t1 is equal to t2 orthogonality and disjoint if and only if uh, geometrically distinct so because the tori are different obviously they have to be orthogonal and uh, we will check below that uh, these two tori and their characters are geometrically conjugate so once they are geometrically conjugate they cannot be disjoint it's if and only if so by orthogonal relation for the lin lustig representation uh, both are sum of two distinct representation first one is uh, this plus that so the only choice for the second one is this minus that because you know the product the orthogonality is there so the product is zero and they are not disjoint you i guess this is okay no let me take a pause you know i am just making some obvious statements that you have one representation and another one which is orthogonal to it but not disjoint it could have been a multiple of this but uh, uh, they both have a norm so to say two and therefore uh, there is no multiples involved so all that we need to do is to check that uh, these two uh, t1 theta1 and t2 theta2 are geometrically conjugate so that means that we have to just uh, look at the definition of geometric conjugacy so uh, any two tori are geometrically conjugate that's no big deal because they all become the same over algebraic closure but it is the characters that we need to take care of so uh, look at uh, uh, f q to the power n star cross f q to the power n star comma chi cross chi and uh, uh, when we base change it to f q to the power 2 n uh, this becomes f q to the power 2 n as many copies as n there and n there and uh, uh, this character chi on f q to the power n will give rise to chi, chi sigma, chi sigma n minus 1, and also on the second part. So, uh, we get a character of f q to the power 2 n star, uh, 2 n copies, which look like this, for the first pair. And for the second pair also, we get the same kind of uh, calculation f q to the power 2 n tensor over f q of f q to the power 2 n is direct sum of f q to the power 2 n and the characters here will go to various galois conjugates which will again give you this so that means that uh, after base change the characters become the same
so yeah so therefore orthogonality and disjointness implies that uh, this dalin lustig induction is the difference of those two representations which came up in the principal series uh, yeah okay good Can I ask one question? Yeah, yeah, Can sure. I ask yes, just sir. the last page? So you have this two representations. One was from F Q N star cross F Q N star. Other was from from the other torus. So yeah. you said they have same common components. Why same common components? That's what I mean, it is. Some 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 common components. Same some common component. Okay, okay. So some, there can be something else, right? Some As components well. components in common. Actually, some common. You know, I mean, uh, I was uh, trying to explain here disjointness. Uh, you know, you have uh, one representation summation n i pi i, and another representation summation m i pi i uh, are said to be disjoint. Whenever one of them is there in V one, then the, it is not there in V two, and conversely. And to say it is not disjoint means that there is one pi one here and also here. So which yes. means that uh, uh, which means what? Uh, so uh, suppose uh, uh, principal series pi comma pi is uh, Steinberg uh, plus identity of uh, pi this one. And uh, we have looked at, uh, let's say, discrete series. Uh, 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 let's just denote it by pi. Uh, we know it has something in common. So let's call that something in common as T pi. Okay. But now we also know orthogonality. The inner product is zero. Yes, so that would say that the ID that that one has to come with minus one component. But then why can't there be third representation in this DS pi? Because uh, let's say there is pi three, but we, you know uh, again by orthogonality we know that uh, this inner product is two. Oh, you know that also, is it? Uh, you know that also because you know this is. Uh, 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 so let's uh, look at that. You know, the orthogonality is a precise orthogonality. Uh, yeah. So <clears throat> we are uh, applying that to this uh, character uh, R F. Q to the power 2n star gl 2n f q of uh, the norm composed with chi. We are applying it to this character. Yes. And yes. Uh, we want to say that because chi is a regular character of f q to the power n star, uh, uh, this with itself is equal to 2 and uh, uh, because there is only one element in the while group which will uh, 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 figure in into that. You know, the inner product is dictated by how many elements in the group take the torus to itself and take the character to itself. That's correct. So in this case, the torus is F2 to the power 2n star. And maybe this is another exercise that uh, in fact that is uh, much more pertinent exercise that uh, the while group for f2 to the power 2n star is z mod 2n yeah maybe this is an exercise which we, uh, people could discuss the galois automorphism will generate right yeah yeah so uh, instead of 2n just let's write down f2 to the power n this one then uh, normalizer of T F Q upon T F Q. This is not a symmetric group, but it is just Z mod N uh, generated in some ways 
by uh, uh, the automorphism of F2 to the power n over F2. I think this is very pertinent because uh, then, uh, you know, for this uh, orthogonality, we are looking at those elements which uh, preserve the torus. So obviously they belong to the normalizer of the torus, but then they should also preserve theta. So now among these automorphisms, which one which fix the character chi, but you know, the chi is a regular character on F2 to the power N star. And therefore the only things which can preserve are uh, uh, so in our case uh, we have f q to the power two n sitting over f q to the power n sitting over f q and uh, uh, chi is a regular character here c star and this is the norm mapping and this is norm composed with chi and therefore uh, this composite sigma is equal to norm composite chi if and only if uh, sigma belongs here. Because you know if it is non-trivial on this f2 to the power n part, chi will get disturbed. Manish, you agree? Yeah, 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 completely. I mean, uh, of course, it is totally clear, but it needs some Galois theory, some uh, facility with Galois theory. Thank you. I'll, I'll think about it more. Yes, thank you. Yeah, yeah. And I think uh, there is this other point of view, which is also very implicit uh, all over that, uh, you know, if a torus is f2 to the power n star, but this is TFQ. So what does TA for any algebra means? It means uh, FQ to the power N tensor over FQ of A and invertible elements. That is what was being used all along. If torus is given by this recipe, well, you know, I mean, this is only in terms of point sets. This is not good enough to do algebraic groups. To give an algebraic group, you must give its value on all algebras A, where A is any algebra over K. And then we were doing it for uh, T of FQ to the power N or FQ to the power 2N. Good? Yeah, thank you. All right. Uh, okay, so anything else? You know, Puja, I mean, in some ways, uh, this example is a souped up version for GL2 of the fact that, uh, you know, if you do induction of the trivial character on the Borel, you get one plus Steinberg. But if you do the induction of uh, the trivial character on the FQ square star torus, then you get Steinberg minus one. But here there is also a pi. So mm -hmm. there is, it's a more complicated version of the same basic example. One plus Steinberg becomes one minus Steinberg. So this behavior will always kind of, uh, is there, uh, for example, if it was like a, bo a standard Borel, we know how the decomposition is. I mean, this is something last time you mentioned. Yeah. The group algebra of wild group kind of yes. dictates how yes. the decomposition is. Yes. So whether it will, I mean, the components and all, is there a relation between that decomposition whenever? Yes. So I'm saying that uh, one can do the same thing uh, for not necessarily uh, parabolic and Borel, but also for dalin lustig induction. Mm -hmm. So, and if I take like these two torus, like one as you did in GL2 here, right? I mean, or G, this special example, you yeah. got the same components, but just plus one became minus one. So now yeah. if I had the decomposition for standard parabolic and I kind of 
try to do it for a non standard one and i stop it then is there will there be a relation that i yeah, yeah there will be but uh, uh, i can imagine that uh, already this one was not so simple uh, you know typically what is going on is uh, characters of wild groups so mm -hmm. i think this one and minus one is perhaps a reflection of some some uh, wild group uh, character values and which is what will happen in general is that okay? thanks so yeah so that is what i would anticipate okay so uh, i think i am running out of time soon so i will do what i can uh, Okay, so there is uh, 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 this basic definition in the subject, unipotent representations of G are constituents of RTG1 for uh, maximal tori T in GFQ. So you look at all the possible maximal tori, but only look at the trivial character and you look at all the constituents. So these are called unipotent representations. And uh, okay, there are many ways to build representation theory. I said cuspidal representations are building blocks, but there is another way to build representation out of these unipotent representations. And uh, uh, basic example of unipotent representations are irreducible constituents of this uh, uh, principal series induced on the trivial character. And the, these we have already discussed are parameterized by uh, representations of the relative wild group. And then uh, there is this very uh, curious phenomenon of cuspidal unipotent representations, which are unipotent representations, which are also cuspidal. So, you know, for GLN, uh, they all arise from induction from B to GFQ, and none of these are cuspidal by definition. But in some classical group cases, in some cases, there are cuspidal unipotent representations. Uh, for instance, for G equals U and FQ, there is a cuspidal unipotent if and only if N is a triangular number, which means that N is a number of the form 1 plus 2 plus N. Uh, for classical groups, these representations exist once in a while, whereas for exceptional groups, there are plenty of them, but they have been enumerated and uh, they uh, serve as building blocks. Okay, so there is one construction here. Maybe, I, okay, so I think for the rest of my lecture, I will go through, uh, maybe just uh, tell you what is being uh, said. Uh, so here I'm looking at unitary group in three variable, and uh, which is defined as I was discussing in this state Thompson business, Z1, Z1 bar plus Z2, Z2 bar plus Z3, Z3 bar equals zero. And, uh, Uh, Z1 bar is Z1 to the power Q. So that was uh, that idea. Uh, so, so I will look at the torus, which is uh, anisotropic torus, K1 cross K1 cross K1, each acting on Zi by Ti Zi. And then, of course, uh, because it, it, they are norm one, it is a maximal torus. And in this case, the lean lustig representation will give a representation which looks like one and Steinberg and then there is a component in between, which is a cuspidal representation. The middle term of dimension Q square minus Q is a cuspidal representation as we check below. So this is what is checked below. Uh, this is also done by a similar idea as in the previous one, comparing this dalin lustig induction to uh, this dalin lustig induction for the torus, which is contained inside a Borel subgroup. So you play off that dalin lustig with this dalin lustig since the character chosen is trivial, uh, they will be geometrically conjugate and therefore there will be some components in common. And what you discover is that uh, one and Steinberg are in common and this component uh, uh, this component, uh, oh, just one moment. Yeah, this component is not there. Yeah, so 
uh, just to say uh, in the U3 example, uh, U3 example, I was looking at two tori, T1 is equal to uh, K1 cross K1 cross K1 and uh, T2 to be K star cross K1. Uh, so this one is uh, contained inside a Borel and therefore this gives rise to a principal series and R T2 comma 1, one can check is 1 plus Steinberg because uh, here the wild group is of order 2 for the torus T2. So it will be only 2 whereas R T3 1 because it is supposed to be orthogonal to this, it is 1 minus Steinberg plus something more plus minus and that is 2 times by 2. And uh, uh, because uh, R T3 1 against R T3 1, this is equal to 6. Because this is the order of the wild group of T, uh, sorry, T1. Why did I write? T1 here, T1 there, T1 there. So T, the, the wild group of T1 is S3, whereas wild group of T2 is Z mod 2. So, Uh, I'm not sure whether uh, uh, these things can be covered even in tutorial because they will need some uh, more. What do you say, Manish? Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> one has to work it out oneself, I think. <laughs> no, but we can still make a try. Yeah, I mean, I'm saying that, uh, you know, this uh, Taurus uh, K1 cross K1 cross K1 or K1 cross K1 K1. Uh, cross K1 in UN, the wild group is the full symmetric group. That is okay. I think we discussed a similar problem in the last tutorial already. Yeah, maybe. Did you discuss the wild group also? Yes, yes. So, so you know, the product of KI is cross sitting in direct sum of uh, GL or direct sum of KI. It okay. will be the rate product with the Galva group uh, with the SR and so on. Good. All right. So, that is no, I think uh, the, that is what is involved here. That yes. the two tori, one of them has a, a wild group S3, one of them has Jet mod 2, and this Jet mod 2 gives rise to 1 plus Steinberg, and yes. this Jet mod uh, S3 gives rise to uh, orthogonal and norm uh, equal to 6, 1 minus Steinberg plus 2 pi 2, and then you check it out that this pi 2 must be cuspidal. So there is just one thing which I did not understand is that this R of T1, comma 1, why should it have only 3? Uh, irreducible factors can it not have six irreducible factors no because once again uh, it is uh, related to uh, the representation theory of uh, wild group of t1 so it is parameterized by the representations of s3 which is 1 1 and 2 just like uh, for the principal series which are uh, given by irreducible representations of the wild group if you look at RT1 for any torus, it is parameterized by the relative wild group of that torus. Yes. Character, the irreducible representations of the relative wild group of that torus. Uh, Dipendra, one question. Yeah. So when you talk of wild group, you should give embedding of the tori. Here the embedding is clear. It's the diagonal embedding. But yeah. what about T2? T2 is the the, uh, the one which is sitting inside the borel. So then it's... Oh, it's okay. in the borel. Okay, okay. It is the quasi-split torus. Sure, sure, sure. So, yeah, it is the borel. So, yeah, yeah, no, I mean, uh, you know, typically tori inside finite field don't give too much uh, of difficulty. I think embedding problems are not... Uh, <laughs> I think... Uh, there is some issue about the embedding problems for general fields, but not for finite fields. I see. Yeah, I was talking to Shripa the other day on this matter. And uh, yeah. Okay, so let me continue, I think, for just a few more minutes. 
Okay, so uh, yeah, so uh, the, uh, the I did not uh, define the Steinberg representation. It plays a very very important role in the whole development of the subject, uh, and it is of course defined very simply as uh, alternating sum of induction from P to G of the trivial representation, and there is this alternating sign starting with the Borel with sign one and the next parabolic sign minus one, the next parabolic sign one and so on. And it is the alternating sum. Uh, equivalently, this is the space of functions on uh, G mod B, modulo functions invariant on the right by a bigger parabolic. Uh, for any uh, rank one group such as GL2 or U3, the Steinberg representation is realized on functions on G mod B modulo constants because G is the only parabolic containing V0. Okay. Steinberg has many interesting properties and Pooja will be happy to note them because she already knows them very well. Uh, for instance, the Steinberg character uh, is uh, takes the value zero if G is not semi-simple and for semi-simple elements, it takes the non-zero value, which is a power of P which is the uh, pth component of the centralizer of that semi-simple element in the group G. In particular, it is non-zero on semi-simple elements and uh, for, for regular semi-simple elements, this value is plus minus one. Further, the Jacquet module of the Steinberg is the Steinberg of the Levy sub. Okay, so uh, as I said, this needs some effort, uh, but I think I have no time, so I will skip that. But I think uh, one another thing which also has to be brought in is that there is certain duality on representations called, uh, uh, due to many people, Al Alves, Aubert, Curtis, Dalin, Lustig, Schneider, Stuller, Jelwinski, etc etc uh, which uh, takes a representation pi to a similar alternating sum as was defined for the Steinberg but this time with uh, you look at the Jackie module you do the induction and to take the alternating sum and uh, pi goes to d uh, d pi and uh, the point is that this operator its square is identity it's an isometry on the growth and group it commutes with parabolic induction and with dalin lustig induction and uh, it uh, flips one and this time work. So uh, this is a rather basic one and uh, yeah, so I think uh, I will prefer not to do this uh, bit about uh, dimension. Uh, Okay, so maybe I should say uh, something without completing that, uh, you know, we are trying to calculate trace of a, uh, action. You know, a group GFQ is operating on a variety X. And we want to calculate the trace of this action on the cohomology. That is what we need to do. And, uh, you know, this is what is called Lefschetz trace formula. Whenever you have a uh, automorphism or an action of something on a topological space, it oper also operates on the cohomology and alternating sum of the traces on the cohomology is called Lefschetz, uh, Lefschetz trace formula. And uh, Lefschetz trace formula is uh, something which is well developed in ethyl cohomology and uh, it has uh, this uh, aspect in characteristic P that uh, uh, if the operator uh, is decomposed in terms of uh, 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 semi-simple and unipotent, meaning in terms of their order being uh, prime to P and uh, P power, then the left sets number for phi comma X is uh, same thing as the left sets operator for the P, prime, P component on the semi-simple part. 
in particular if the order of phi is co prime to p then the left sets number is given by so to say identity endomorphism on the fixed point set and uh, typically what happens in this game is that uh, these actions by gfq or by uh, the levy are translation so they have no fixed point and uh, therefore the left sets fixed point formula collapses that for each uh, semi simple element which is not identity the left sets trace formula gives you zero so the left sets trace formula is concentrated only on uh, identity element so you know this is one of those happy circumstances when uh, you need to apply the trace formula and all non identity elements give you trace zero so as a result what happens is that uh, as far as representation of the torus is concerned it becomes a multiple of the regular representation because any character which is uh, zero outside the identity is multiple of the regular representation so what that means is that the dimension of rt theta is independent of theta and uh, then you have to just add up the numbers so adding up the, that number is uh, again done by that you have to just understand at the identity and uh, it comes about so okay so yeah so that's uh, roughly the idea that uh, the trace formula for non identity elements gives you zero because uh, the action by the group on the variety is fixed point free that is part of the left sets trace formula that you have to look at the fixed points but that works only for semi simple elements so somehow you have to reduce yourself to calculating it only for semi simple elements that formula is uh, um, immensely more complicated if the uh, action you are taking is uh, has these wild components co prime to p and uh, power of p but if it is semi simple then it is good so the trick which one uses is that uh, one calculates the inner product so you see this one you calculate the inner product with the steinberg but the steinberg character is non zero only on semi simple elements so i think uh, somehow one wins there yeah so uh, all right so i think uh, uh, there was a, a little bit more there is something called jordan decomposition in terms of unipotent representation but i think i will leave that I'll, already i am over time so thank you for your attention but i am happy to maybe take a few questions or chat about any concept thank you dipendra for your talk let's first uh... Uh, thank Dipendra for his wonderful talk. And the uh, Thanks a lot for your uh, generously agreeing to give talk. Okay. If anyone has any question, please can ask. Also, I, I... it's a demanding theory, but. Uh, I think for a from a utilitarian point of view, it's maybe not so difficult. Jya Pooja, you wanted to say something. I just wanted to ask you one thing. So you said unipotent representations are also building blocks. So I just wanted to know why did you say that? I mean, mostly people cuspidals are building blocks, but then you said unipotent representations are also building blocks. So why did you say that? You know, I think the analogy, which is what uh, this Jordan decomposition is about, is, uh, you know, uh, you know the, uh, to understand representations is like understanding conjugacy classes. And uh, conjugacy class is semi-simple times unipotent. So uh, you want to understand conjugacy classes which look like S times U. So one way to break this problem is uh, 
uh, u belongs to the centralizer of s because you know this is jordan decomposition they commute and supposing that uh, centralizer of s was connected which is typically the case let's put it that way so if the centralizer of s is connected then to understand the pair s comma u all you need to do is to understand unipotent element in the centralizer of s so that is what is called lustig's jordan decomposition is that uh, uh, somehow you can do this on representations also so a representation has somehow a semi simple component and then a representation of the centralizer of some semi simple conjugacy class So I don't know about this. So what's the reference for this? Like, what? Where should I look at? No, I mean any book which deals with uh, this kind of representation theory will have. Uh, in fact, uh, recently I found out that there is a, uh, there is a large book. You, can you see this? Yes, character theory of finite groups of Lie type. Yes. I is don't it? know whether Shripad has already a copy of this. This is. Uh, I think uh, uh, Gek and Mal Male ah. is maybe one of the well-known people in the subject, and it's quite a large book. But you know, somewhat there is recent a, book. Right? Sorry, there is somewhat recent book. Yeah, somewhat recent. Of course, there is this older book by Dine and Michel, which I use, right. which is right. uh, wonderful. Yeah. Bit condensed, but uh, wonderful. Mm -hmm. Uh, and of course, it is the uh, older uh, book by Carter. Yes. Yeah. Which is also very encyclopedic. Uh, Deependra? Yeah. The, the character theory for finite groups of Lie type was already done before the Ling Lustig theory? No. Uh, uh, only Green's work was there for GL and FQ. I see. And uh, Steinberg, uh, yeah, the history is Steinberg did it in his thesis for GL3 and GL4. Then Green did it for GLN. Then Bhama Srinivasan did it for SP4. SP4. That's it. Okay. So Dalin Lustig went from SP4 to G. All. So no, McDonald's no, conjectures were after SP4. McDonald conjectures were based on uh, Green's work. I would say mostly because Green's works are, uh, they kind of give you a picture of what it should mm -hmm. be. And then SP4 and so on. Yeah. Green's work is quite non trivial. But. Uh, different methods. Dalin Lustig is totally brand new methods. Uh, you also made some comment about uh, this correspondence between irreducible representations and conjugacy classes. Is it very uh, well understood correspondence? At least in some cases? No, I mean, uh, you know, uh, what one says is that uh, to a representation, uh, one associates a certain conjugacy class in the dual group. Mm -hmm. okay. And uh, then the Jordan decomposition of the dual group uh, gives rise to Jordan decomposition of the representation. So yeah, I would say uh, uh, I think what is said is that uh, um, maybe it's not quite one to one, but uh, in some generic sense. Uh, uh, there is a uh, conjugacy class in uh, GFQ. Yeah, I mean, uh, so this is different from Kirillov's kind of theory, right? Kirillov orbit sorry? method works. In, so Kirillov's theory that Kirillov orbit method that where Lie algebra, I have a dual action of the, I mean, I have the action of the dual Lie algebra on the orbits. There is a correspondence uh, yeah. between the orbits. It's not of that flavor, right? Is, or is that of that flavor? 
the dimension. No, I think it's a different flavor, different flavor. I oh. think uh, maybe the Kirillo orbit method is quite direct. Mm -hmm. You have a co-character and uh, of a certain kind, you can construct the representation as induced representation. Uh, Yeah, so I I cannot say it's some kind of dalin lustig induction, but I think the problem is because dalin lustig I think the most of the problem in the subject is because the dalin lustig induction is not irreducible. If it was irreducible, then you are done. But typically, it is not irreducible. It is like saying that typical element in a group is not regular, and then you have to deal with Jordan decomposition. Mm -hmm. Uh, sir, I think that for torus situation, not the Levy one, yeah, this correspondence, this conjugacy class, I yeah. mean, you know, so irreducible of TF is isomorphic is the T star F star. I mean, the dual side. Yeah, yeah. In the in this, I mean, torus situation. When Levy is the torus. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. In the in that situation, this correspondence, I mean, conjugacy class correspondence is quite quite explicit. I think. I mean. Yeah, so oh, uh, one can uh, be, yeah, yeah, parameterize. I mean, uh, it is explicit uh, in terms of the linguistic induction, maybe. Yeah. I think what one says is that characters of the tori are transported to elements of the dual torus. Yes, yes, yes. That those those lustic series comes. Uh, yeah, I feel. Lustic series, yeah. yeah. So characters of the torus can be treated as characters of the dual torus. Uh, yes. Yeah. Dipendra? Yeah. For SL to FQ, you get two different types of cuspidal representations, right? What? How for SL to FQ? For SL to FQ, you get what? I mean, two different types of cuspidal representations, or no. different dimensions, so to say. No, all Q minus one, no? Ah, for Q GL2, for, for GL2, all Q minus one, but for SL2, there is some exception, right? That's what. So that is what I was saying that the linguistic theory will only give you Q minus one. And when uh -huh. there is an exception, it will give you direct sum of Q minus one by two and Q minus one by two and will okay. not distinguish between uh, uh, the two components. Two components. Okay. But it can recover all cuspidal representations in some way or other. It other. can recover all. So every irreducible representation appears somewhere, but it doesn't appear uh, in some nice way. The linguistic representation itself is not irreducible. Okay. okay. Thank you, Dibendra. <laughs>